Okay, let's take a look at main guitars. The song starts with this mono guitar. Um, our goal really was to keep the arrangement really slim up front, focus the listener on just a few elements. So let's check that out real quick. Great, great performance all around. Um, as you can see, um, we use DI for for this entire record. Um, a little bit about that. Uh, as I mentioned um, prior, I, I basically do demos. If I'm producing a band, we work on the songs before we actually start recording. So we'll get in and just start discovering the song, discovering the arrangement, um, and oftentimes we'll move very quickly. And, and so DI and doing um, amp sims uh, via plugins or, or something like that uh, is so flexible and they sound so good this day and age. Um, it's hard to beat. Um, but what I, I typically do with a, a, a project is I allow myself some time uh, towards the end to do some reamping and to try to beat those tones. Um, a lot of people have a lot of great gear, even with things like Axe Effects or, or something like that where a client might want to take those tones to the stage. Um, we allow some time to, to, to make all that work. <clears throat> so if I can beat the tones with real amps, we'll go that way. If I can't, um, we stay with the plugins. And then try to map or do a tone capture um, so the client can use that moving forward. Um, this particular verse part was um, STL's tonality, um, and that was amp three. So uh, let's turn off the SSL and the limiter and just show you the amp. Nothing too crazy there, just a low gain, um, really cool part. Um, and then SSL EQ, uh, which you've seen um, so far, the same channel strip is on the entire uh, mix. So again, with that 1.5K high shelf, uh, we're adding almost 5 dB there. Also adding a little point at like 2.5K. This 2.5K for me, uh, adding 3 dB just to finish that point, um, that 2.5 area for me is like where modern records live. Um, if I need clarity in an instrument or a vocal, I'll often boost in that range. Um, and then again with this concept of shaping the low end with multiple uh, things. So I have a low shelf at 148. Um, and I'm subtracting 1.3 dB there. And uh, then at the same time, that in that high-pass filter in conjunction at 104. So again, we're kind of tailoring that filter, and that low shelf is, is just sh is creating a shape down on that bottom. Um, let's listen to this with the SSL on and off. Yeah, so you can see it's just a little dull, right? <clears throat> so adding that high shelf and then shaping that low end is really just pushing the instrument uh, forward and uh, making it um, the, the high end match the rest of the mix. 
Um, so there's that track. Um, and then that happens again as we start verse 2. And then halfway through verse 2, that gets doubled. So two mono takes um, left and right. Um, let's check that out real quick so we can see both of those. And here's verse 2. And just to quickly touch on that, <clears throat> um, if that isn't just immediately uh, clicking for you, as the song progresses, we get wider. Um, as the song grows from start to finish, we add more layers. So um, in its biggest moment, it's not only its tallest, but it's its widest as well. Um, I don't want to skip over this. Uh, uh, my apologies for jumping forward into the second verse. I probably don't even have to say sorry. <laughs> um so L1 follows the SSL. <clears throat> so um, this is a pretty standard um, setting for me. Uh, the release, I leave typically where it's at, unless it starts to sound funny. Um, pulling the threshold and the out ceiling just to get maybe minus 5, minus 6 dB of gain reduction on, on L1. I'm going to go back to the beginning so you can hear that. And then without. Yeah, what I really like about that is it's uh, controlling a lot of those transients and the bounce of the string, the bounce of the pick. Um, that's all played on one single string. It's like pull-offs and, and hammer-ons and um, just a really cool part. So that essentially is the common thread of the verse. As you can see, I've got uh, that second verse, why I wanted to bring that up. It's panned a little different. One's 50% and then one's 100%, but then I'm automating the pan to go 100 and 100 when that becomes doubled. Little detail there. So that is that first main guitar, which takes us to the core, uh, the first chorus, which is a down chorus. Let's listen to that with everything in. Um, that is the that is these two tracks here. And uh, what we used here is Guitar Rig 5. <clears throat> I absolutely love this plugin. Um, it's been one of my favorites probably going back to oh, 2016, 2017. It's hard to beat. Um, there's a Warm Universe preset that I'll often modify, which is like a um, Soldano-esque sort of tone. Bring the gain back, pick a cabinet, in this case it's a 412. Uh, there's this little reflector that I've turned off, um, and but there is a, a couple compressors in series, so let's um, let's by bypass the SSL and the LA3A and the L1, and just listen to one side of this, so you can hear just what the amp sounds like by itself. Pretty straightforward, right? <clears throat> um, that way you can see, you know, what those compressors are doing. Not too much. Add the SSL again, 1.5k shelf. Uh, we're adding about 3 dB. Um, so I think what you'll see is that that's the common thread, right? With this guitar that we use, which was an ESP um, LTD um, 
that had an Evertune in it. I can't recommend anything with an Evertune enough. It makes life a lot easier when you're recording. Um, keep things in tune. I love that you can go into different zones. So if you want to bend a little bit, you can put the guitar in a different zone to do that, or you can lock it down so the strings don't bend at all. Um, back to this EQ. So 1.5 shelf, adding some high end there. And, and I think you'll see that, right? Like the goal of mixing is adding 3 dB of, of high end uh, on that shelf. That will that won't be the same for every instrument, but the goal is to try to match that. So your elements or your program material feels like it's strong, and it's it's like a I, I like the metaphor of a train heading down a track. It's it's all compact and it's just moving fast, and it's all the same thing. If you've got some too much high end in one thing and not enough another, they look they kind of feel like parts that are bolted onto the train, and it's not solid. Um, so. It's just on us as mix engineers to know uh, those values, right? So we can, if it's 4 dB on one thing and 7 on another, that's part of the art. <clears throat> so trial and error um, is everything. So on this high mid filter on the SSL at 2.4, again, that I love that 2.5 range. I'm adding 2.5 dB, um, just clarity. And then um, pulling out a little at 141 into that low shelf again, uh, that same technique, minus 2.3 there, in conjunction with a, uh, a high-pass filter at 112. And again, we're just shaping that bottom. Let's hear that with the SSL in and out. and then bypassed. And I just want to touch on one thing because I, I, I can see it here is um, I have pre-dine pre in, which puts the EQ before the compressor in this channel strip. Um, it doesn't look like I used it. I must have been experimenting and then never shut that off. <clears throat> so um, that takes me to my compression, which on this I used LA-3A. This is pretty straightforward. The default settings usually great for the gain structure. Uh, you may need to bump that here or there, but um, peak reduction, I try to get no more than minus 3 dB on a guitar for an LA-3A like this. Yeah, and then without. Really subtle, just controlling it a bit. And then, again, I'm coming back in with L1. Same, um, this L1 setting is the same across all these guitars, uh, at least the main guitars. Um, and that's just holding L, it's just holding the signal in place. Let's check that out so you can see that meter. And without. And that is the clean guitar in that down chorus. Um, so we, we layer that with the acoustic guitar. Let's check out um, what that acoustic does. This is just kind of some strums. Um, which is, I usually record a large diaphragm condenser, like a mono, and then like a stereo ribbon. Um, in this case, it was like the AEA R88, uh, which is super dark. Um, let's check this out by itself.
and then let's listen to those together. Pretty cool stuff. Um, now let's tear apart that acoustic. So um, if I pull all this processing off the acoustic, listen how dark this is. Would help if I hit solo. So uh, we start with a little fab filter, just corrective EQ, pulling out some 200, 250, um, technically at 237 with a wide Q. Um, that range, I think, is something, you know, years in the, uh, in the, into the future <laughs> and talking to my old self, um, I really had to work hard at learning that 150 to 300 range in the frequency spectrum. Um, that to me, I think, is... Uh, where uh, the pros really make their living, um, being able to hear low end and um, and 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 even lower than this, as good as people hear high end. Uh, I think that's the real art in mixing. Um, when you're fixing the bass and it improves the vocal, like you're you're really mixing. Um, so I'm adding some uh, some 994. It's just that telephone frequency to try to get some of that. I like the the scrapes. And, and this acoustic guitar was all about texture. So there's that. The SSL, um, look at that, 8K. It's just dimed. Um, let's uh, see what else we got. So pulling out a little bit more, again, 1 dB at 200. And then uh, rolling off with that high or that low shelf again, 141. We're taking out about 2.5 dB. And then uh, we've got both filters engaged here. So the high pass is at 100, and then the low pass is at about um, 4.6K. And that's kind of making it a little, uh, not super AM radio, but it's shaving the tips and the tail off um, just to kind of put it in the frequency spectrum. Um, let's check out the acoustic with those two things in. Pretty cool. And then LA3A again. Uh, nothing to write home about here. It's going to be the same thing I showed you on the cleans, just maybe somewhere between minus 1 and minus 3D on uh, the gain reduction. Cool. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, now, on this one... I wanted to add a little bit more depth and dimension, and I think that's what we'll get into with the lead guitars, um, which we'll look at next. Is I want there's depth in in uh, a story here, um, especially with the title like undertow. Like I wanted to play into some of that meaning. So on this acoustic guitar, obviously we've got these clean chords happening from Nick. Um, I didn't want that texture to be up front, so I've. I've used this Studio Al Studio Alpha um, preset, excuse me, and then tailored the high cut and the depth and the decay and the pre-delay. Um, just in, in terms of like even the reverb mode being set to large chamber, um, those are things that I've just pulled up and dialed into taste. So let's check that out. Um, again, I'm going to engage NLS just because it's not doing anything. Um, but yeah, let's hear um, this acoustic with Valhalla Room on and then off. Mm -hmm. 
Such a beautiful sound. That's a Taylor 414 CE, by the way. Great, great acoustic. And there we go. Um, so again, let's check those those out. And really beautiful stuff. <clears throat> so. That's basically it for the whole front of the song. 